Hello, algebra students. Mr. Lawrence here. Um, <coughs> excuse me. We're going to be writing equations from stories today, and some of you are going to have a hard time with this because you don't read very well. And you say, well, Mr. Lawrence, I read really well. I'm in advanced language arts. Yeah, uh, you don't read math very well. So I'm going to try to make it easier for you, but you've got to pay attention to the math, and you're going to want to write these things down. Okay, and if I say more things in class that, you know, are new to you, write them down. Don't assume that you know. Okay, first of all, let's look at this. 10 less than a number. Now, I know some of you are thinking you're going to write, well, 10 minus some number. Absolutely not. No, 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 no. You're not thinking. See, you got to think about what it means. If I want 10 less than something, do I go 10 minus? Hmm. Well, let's play a number game. I'll name a number. You name a number that's 10 less than that number, okay? 15. What's that? Yes, 10. Uh, 5 is correct. Why? Because 15 minus 10 is 5. Let's try it again. Um, 73. What's that? 63? Of course. 10 less than 73 is 63. So you see, 10 less than a number does not mean 10 minus some number. It means some number minus 10. Okay, now some of you are going to read this and like force it together as a less than statement because, you know, you're used to seeing less than in math, uh, but it's not going to be. Uh, this is just simply 10 less than a number. So you take 10 away from whatever the number is. All right, five more than a number. Well, I'm sure most of you are smart enough now to go, hey, well, that's a number plus five. And of course, <clears throat> just to make it complicated, the commutative property would allow you to write 5 plus n, right? These two would be equivalent, wouldn't they? Because of the commutative property of addition. What I really would request you do, though, is don't write it as 5 plus n. Because if you're having trouble with this first example, then doing it backwards on this one, even though it's legal because of the commutative property, you, uh, you will tend to has to continue to have troubles with 10 less than a number. So I'm going to suggest you always 10 less, you write minus 10. Five more, you write uh, plus five after whatever it is. All right, one more I want to talk about before I actually do some problems. Twice the quantity of four less than a number tripled. Twice the quantity. Well, I'm going to need a quantity, okay? I need twice that quantity. Well, I'm going to need to multiply it by two. What's the quantity going to have in it of, quantity is actually going to be here, 4 less, now if you were paying attention before, you know you're going to have to subtract 4, then 4 less than what? A number triple. I don't know the number, and I need to triple it. And there you go. This says twice the quantity of 4 less than a number triple. It's kind of weird because you're kind of all over the place. But we can get it. It's not that bad. What am I doing? There we go. All right, so let's try this. We've got 6 less. So I know I'm going to subtract 6. What am I going to subtract it from? Twice a number. I don't know the number. Twice means to multiply by 2, so I'm going to have a 2n. I need 6 less than twice a number. Do you notice how I haven't even read through the whole sentence? How I keep bouncing around? That's on purpose. 6 less triggered the thought minus 6. 6 less than what? Well, I need twice a number. I don't know the number. I use a variable. And I need twice that number. So it's going to be 2n and then 6 less than that. 2n minus 6 is, means equal, 40. All right, now I just have a simple two-step equation. And I'll solve it by adding 6 to both sides. And I'll get 2n equals 46. And then dividing by 2 will tell me that the number is 23. Okay, so if I wanted to check that, I could double this number and I get 46. I need 6 less than that, and look at that, I sure do, I get 40. Okay, so I'm going to encourage you to not like just read through and try to take it all in at once. You know, sometimes I get parents complaining about problems like this. They don't make any sense. Or they're confusing. Well, they're confusing if you try to take in all the information at once. It confuses me when I hear it much. You notice like when I have you read story problems to me, 
I make you stop, I make you pause, I say, hold on, because there's too much information to take in at one time and it, it's overloading. But if you take it in small steps and find the things that you know and then put them together, then it's not so bad. And I've, I've found high school math is like that with everything. Always relate something that confusing to something you already know how to do. All right, so let's come on to number two, five less than the quotient. Oops, you can tell Mr. Lawrence typed it because the tay came out. It's supposed to be the, of course. Five less, so I'm going to subtract five from something. Quotient, well, that's the answer to a division problem. There's going to be some kind of division. And by the way, this is the only place you'll see me use the division symbol. I'll use a fraction bar instead when I go to write it, but I'm just doing a little memory jog here. Of a number, oh my goodness, another typo. Dear Mr. Lawrence, what are you doing? B-E-R, sorry. I guess I could just fix those real quick. You won't mind. And it would be better to have them spelled correctly. Where is my mouse? Thank you. All right. Boom. See, there's no mistake. Ignore that man hiding behind the curtain. Yeah, there we go. All right, so the quotient of what? Well, I need the quotient of a number, which will be n or x. You can use any letter in the alphabet for a variable. I like n because number begins with n, um, but you cannot use o because we can't tell if it's zero. The quotient of a number and two Oh, well, I think that would be n over 2, n divided by 2, okay, is 12. So that's equals 12. So I need the quotient of a number in 2. I have that 5 less than the quotient. So 5 less than this. So I'll take 5 away. Uh, is 12. Is 12. All right. Now I'm just going to go ahead and solve this two-step equation. I'm going to get n over 2 equals 17, and then one woman is going to show up and help me fight these numbers, these bad fractions. All right, so n is going to equal 34. So 5 less than the quotient of a number and 2 is 12. Well, if I did 34 divided by 2, I would get 17. 5 less than 17 is 12. There you go. I did it correctly. All right, moving right along like, sorry about that, broke into the Muppets for a second. Actually, I, I hear Mr. Garish does a pretty mean Fozzie Bear, and I do a pretty good Kermit the Frog. I've always thought for the talent show we should get together and sing moving right along, but can't seem to talk him into it. Anyway, all right, four more. I'm going to need a plus four somewhere. Four more than what? Then the quantity of, ooh, I'm going to need a quantity of, well, I'm going to start the quantity right after the word of, so I'm going to put it Okay, quantity of three less than twice a number. Okay, is means equals. And of course, there's a 10 there. But the only thing I have to figure out in the middle here is this three less than twice a number. Well, the number, I don't know. Twice a number is 2n. Three less than twice a number would be 2n minus 3. Okay, so it says four more than the quantity of. So I need my quantity, which is 2n minus 3. I need 4 more than that, uh, and that will equal 10. All right, I think I'm going to combine like terms on the left-hand side. I get plus 1, 10, and then I'm going to subtract 1 from each side. I'm going to get 2n equals 9, divide by 2. And it's going to equal four and a half. And there's my number. All right. Uh, now let's see here. Let's test it. If I double this, I get nine minus three. And that's going to be six. And then four more than six is indeed ten. And there you go. All right. Two more problems. Again, these can be a little bit tricky if you don't stop and think about what you're reading here. Bob is two years younger than three times Susan's age. Okay. First of all, let me define some variables here. We're going to have two sets of variables in this one. So let B equal Bob's 
age today. Now, notice I didn't say B is Bob. No, B is not Bob. B is Bob's age today. Okay, and then I'm going to let S equal Susan's age today. Okay, there is an equation here in this first sentence. Let me highlight so I know I'm not look. I haven't even read through the whole story, but Bob is two years younger than three times Susan's age, and that's today. Okay, of course, you know, two years from now that'll be different. So my first equation I'm going to write, I'm going to have Bob, and I'm going to have Susan. Now I know I need three times Susan's age, so I'm going to need a 3s. Now who's older? And some of you are going to go, well, Susan, because of three. No, Bob is two years younger than three times Susan's age. For these to be equal, I have to triple Susan's age and then take two away. See, Bob's the older one, okay? So I want to set up my equation such that they're going to be equal to each other. So I stop and I put down Bob and Susan. And I know it says that Bob is two years younger than three times Susan's age. It's kind of like saying three less than twice Susan's age. That's what this really says. Three less. Oh, I'm sorry. Two less than three times Susan's age. That's what's going on here. Two less than 3s. So it's 3s minus 2. So there's one equation in two variables. I can't solve that. You don't know how to solve an equation, one equation in two variables. Neither do I. It's not possible. But if we had a second equation, we might be able to use a transitive property and uh, come up with some kind of solution. So let's see if we can find another equation. In five years, now, how old is Bob today? Well, it's He's B years old, right? So in five years, we'll be talking about B plus five. And I'm going to put that in a quantity. I don't know if the quantity is necessary yet, but whatever operation I do with Bob's age in five years, I want to make sure I'm not using B. I'm using five more than B. Okay. And then I'm going to need Susan's age at some point. So I'm going to write that down because... Um, in a quantity as well for the same reason. It's We're talking about five years in the future. Okay, in five years, Bob's age will be 10 more. So Bob's age will be 10 more than Susan's age in five years double. Well, let's double Susan's age five years from now. Now, Bob is 10 greater than this number. So to make them equal, I'm going to have to add 10 to Susan's side. Now think about that for a second. Let's say you're 14. Some of you are 14. And Mr. Lawrence is 44. Okay. To make them equal, I have to add to the smaller one. I have to add to your age. I could have subtracted from the larger one. That would work as well. But you've got to keep in mind that you always want these to be equal. And you're going to have to add to the smaller one and subtract from the larger one. Kids often want to do it the other way around. Okay, so where, where are we at here? Uh, so I have the second equation. Now I'm going to simplify it. I'm going to try to get this B alone over here. So before I do that, I'm going to distribute this 2 and get a 2s plus 10. And then there's another plus 10. And so that's going to get me 2s plus 20. All right, I'm going to have a B plus 5 over here, a B plus 5 over here. And I'm going to get this B alone, and I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. And so I'm going to get Bob's age today equals twice Susan's age plus 15. Okay? And now, if you look, I have two equations in two variables, the same two variables. I have this one here. And I have this one here. In fact, I think I am going to rewrite this one. B equals 2s plus 15. Now, remember, I mentioned about the transitive property. Well, let me ask you this. B is equal to 3s minus 2. B is also equal to 2s plus 15. 
What does that mean about these two? Oh, they must be equal too. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come over here and I'm going to write it down. 3s minus 2 is going to equal 2s plus 15. How did I do that? Well, I said a equals b, and then when I had a again, a equals c. I kind of altered the transitive property. Transitive property is a equals b, and b equals c, and a equals c, right? Well, I said if a equals b and a equals c, these two are equal, of course, then therefore these two must be equal. So now that I've got them equal to each other, I can solve it. Notice there's only one variable. There's, it shows up on two sides of the equation, but it's only s. So I'll get s minus 2 equals 15, adding 2 to both sides, and I will get s equals 17. And that's Susan's age. So Susan is 17 years old. And then Bob, Bob, I can use either one of these equations. I'll probably use this one. Twice 17 is 34. 34 and 15 is 49. Bob must be 49. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's going to work. 49 years Oh, Don't worry. We're going to get some more practice with these in class tomorrow. Okay. Uh, let's try this one, and then we're going to wrap this video up. All right, Stan has twice as many shirts as he has hats. So I'm going to let S equal the number of shirts. Not S equals shirts, S equals the number of shirts. Okay, H is going to equal the number of hats. Okay, he has twice as many shirts as he does hats. Well, I've got the shirts, I've got the hats. Which one does he have more of? twice as many shirts. So to make them equal, I have to double the number of hats. See that? I'm not doubling the number of shirts. That would mean he has uh, way more hats than he does shirts. Okay? I know that can be a little bit confusing. But if he has more shirts than hats, I have to increase the number of hats. And in this case, it's twice as many, so I'm doubling it. I'm multiplying by two. Okay. If he buys three more hats, so now I'll buy three more hats. So he doesn't have H hats. He has H plus three. The number of shirts, <coughs> S, will be 16 less than three times the number of new hats. So I'm going to have to multiply that. Okay. Now this number of shirts will be 16 less than that number tripled. So I will take 16 away from it. And there we go. Now... Here we go, A equals B, and C is equal to A, and I'm going to say B and C are equal to each other. I'm just using a version of the transitive property, okay? So I'm going to take 2H, set it equal to 3 times the quantity of H plus 3, minus 16. All right, 2H equals 3H plus 9. Minus 16. Got to simplify that right hand side a little bit. 3h uh, minus 7. I'm going to subtract 3h from each side. I know you're going to say, Mr. Lawrence, don't wouldn't you, should you have subtracted 2h? Sure, I could have, and I would add 0, and I just would add an extra step. In this case, I chose to not worry about having a negative coefficient, uh, but it wouldn't be wrong to do it the other way. So H is going to equal 7. So there are 7 hats. 7 hats. Okay? If 7 hats, the shirts equals twice that amount. There must be 14 shirts. And there you go. All right. We will get some practice with this tomorrow on the next day in class. By the way, I heard rumors of a quiz coming up. Mr. Lawrence signing out. Good night, everybody.